Hi, hello, I'm Sam Harrison. I read, review and discuss fantasy, science fiction, books. Today, we're going over my August wrap up. In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about the books that I read in August, my favorite books, my least favorite books, the videos that I made in August and my uh, best and worst performing videos. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about what's happening next month in September, which is now, currently, when you're seeing this, and it also is now when I'm recording this. I should have said this month. Moving swiftly on, let's talk about the books that I read last month. So, I started five books in August, but I finished two. And now, I know what you're thinking. Sam, how did you manage to start five books but only finish two? And that is because, unfortunately, I just did not get on with The First Binding by R.R. R. Verdi. Um, I was not in the right mood, not in the right headspace for that book. Um, it was very much a book about vibes and about storytelling, but it wasn't so much, at the beginning at least, about telling me a story that I was interested in. Um, I'm, I'm definitely... A plot focused reader when it comes to my books I like there to be a strong plot and then once that strong plot is established I am happy to spend loads of time on vibes characters things like that but I just I read 200 pages of first binding and it took me a couple of weeks to read that much which is very unusual for me and I just struggled with it it just was not the right book for me um, however I came straight off of that into two five-star reads. And those are the two books that I finished last month. So my next book was, drum roll, my book of the month, Crown of Swords by Robert Jordan. So this is the seventh book in The Wheel of Time. Um, maybe I shouldn't give this book of the month. Maybe I should give it to Recursion. I don't know. September is going to be a doozy because I've already finished two fantastic books. Um, and I'm reading a third. Um, but, uh, yeah. And you know what? We're not crowning of swords. We're not crowning a best book for August. Because they're both five-star reads and I enjoyed them both. Um, and so, yeah. my the, first, the next two books that I read were Recursion by Blake Crouch and Crown of Swords. Now, Crown of Swords is a Wheel of Time book, and I have loved every one of those that I've read. Um, they've all been five stars apart from The Eye of the World. Um, and when I think about it, maybe I would rate Fires of Heaven a four. Um, but it's hard to mark that book down for one side story, if that makes sense. So, yeah, Crown of Swords is supposedly the start of the slog. I can see why in the 90s a crown of swords, 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 swords might have felt like a slog because that book is so episodic. Lord of Chaos, Crown of Swords, they really feel like they're in a dialogue with each other as, you know, part one and part two. If you told me that originally they were one novel that Jordan cut up, I would absolutely believe you because it really feels like we're seeing the implications of a lot of the events from Lord of Chaos in Crown of Swords. We're seeing the payoff of storylines that have started in Lord of Chaos. I loved it. I really like that episodic format. I come from, you know, a childhood of being a huge prestige TV fan and a comic book reader. So coming from that, you know, many years of watching TV stories, paced out week by week, like things like Babylon 5 and Lost and stuff like that. But then also getting, you know, comic books where storylines would take place usually over around six months. Um, and, you know, there might not be a satisfying beginning, middle and end to each individual issue. Um, there often is, but there might not be. And I feel like um, Crown of Swords is maybe not the most satisfying book but it was very uh, it made me want to read the next one right away um and i had the opportunity to do that i haven't i'm going to be reading it soon but i had the opportunity to do that whereas when it was right in the middle of the slog you were waiting two three years for these books 
So I completely understand why people who read it at the time were like, oh, why is this, you know, why do we not have, enough, have more of this, you know? So the other two books that I, you know what? We haven't talked about Recursion. So Recursion, I posted the review yesterday. Um, I'm recording this on the Tuesday, the third. Um, so yeah, I, I posted the review yesterday. This one was another five star. Um, it could have been a four, but I think that I enjoyed it enough and I literally binge read it in a day. Um, so I really enjoyed it, really love reading it. Um, it is a kind of twisty turny sci-fi thriller. Um, it deals with themes of love and loss and memory. They have two, for me at least, incredibly relatable POV characters. And I just loved how Blake Crouch kind of turns the book on its end multiple times. And I, I genuinely really enjoyed it. Um, there's two, there's one like massive turn in the middle, I guess, ish. And then there's like multiple smaller ones later on in the book where the, the book kind of really flips on its head. Um, I've just realized I'm starting to lose my voice. So that's fun for somebody who has not recorded all my videos for the week yet. However, um, after Recursion, I went to Soul Stealer, which is by Elle McInerney. Um, this is the first book in her series, The Unraveling. Um, this is a self-published fantasy epic. Um, I would say, and the, the comp titles for this book, and I say this every time I bring it up, but the comp titles are Game of Thrones, Wheel of Time. And I do feel like we are kind of there. So it's a much more magical and fantastical world than Game of Thrones is at the outset. Similar to how Wheel of Time is, you know, you have uh, magic using characters as, as, as major parts of the story. It does, however, deal with a more of a grim, dark world than the Wheel of Time. It's very interesting because they are at the end of a period of peace and prosperity in uh, Soul Stealer. So the 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 main th thrust of the story is that there was a kind of magic mini apocalypse a few hundred years ago, and now the people who caused that magic mini apocalypse are back and we have these three separate characters two of which are magic users one of which is not so we have these three characters and they're all from different societies so we have one that's from this kind of uh society that has hidden itself away from the world um due to how it was persecuted um in the ruin the this magical apocalypse we have one which is um the kind of prosperous almost medieval european style society that has grown up in the wake of this magical apocalypse and then we finally have the remnants of this tribal society that kind of escaped the magical apocalypse and then shut itself away um, in uh, in kind of response to being kind of heavily involved in the magical apocalypse. Um, we don't really know everything yet, and I've read the book, and I, you know this is the beginning of a series, so um, really looking forward to reading more from this author. Um, and uh, we actually have been chatting over email and hopefully she'll be coming on the channel for an interview. And even on better on top of that, she has actually just posted a Kickstarter for a prequel book in the series. And it's already funded. It was funded within seconds, which is really cool to see. Um, Soul Stealer is um, a book that I'm really looking forward to doing the review for, and that will be out on Monday. So please stay tuned to the channel um, and you can watch the full review um, where I'll go deeper on the characters and the, the themes and the stories and stuff. But yeah, genuinely really excited by reading that one. Now for a quick word from our sponsor before we go on to the final mystery book. Hey, I'm behind this bush and I'm here to talk to you today about your Paper Quest. Your Paper Quest is a bookish subscription box where you get two independently published books sent to you every single month on a varying genre and theme. 
could be fantasy, could be sci-fi, could be horror. These books are selected by the fantastic people at Your Paper Quest, and you don't just get books, you'll also get some bookish bits, you'll get access to a book club where you can talk to other Your Paper Quest subscribers about the books that you're reading together, and also ask questions of the authors. You'll also be able to watch monthly interviews with those authors where they talk about their books. If you're interested in uh, if you're interested in trying out your paper quest, you can do so on a monthly, bi-monthly or quarterly basis. And even better than that, you can get a 20% discount by using the code SAM20 when you check out. So why not sign up today and try out your paper quest? I hope you enjoyed that advert. I have been trying to make them interesting and fun. The final book that I started in September, I have now finished both of these. So I finished Soul Stealer and I finished this final book, which is Soul Fraud by Andrew Givler. So Andrew Givler is a fellow YouTuber, actually. He's got a um, gaming YouTube channel, which is like gigantic, it has millions and millions of subs. But he also has a booktube channel where he um, talks about reading and writing his own books. And um, you can tell this series is heavily inspired by the Dresden Files. And honestly, as a huge Dresden fan, this is exactly what I've been looking for since I got up to date. So I got up to date on Dresden last year um, and have basically been in a bit of an urban fantasy wasteland ever since. I've tried other books and nothing has hit the mark for me. Nothing has been good enough. Nothing has felt like Dresden for me, but Soul Fraud nails it. Soul Fraud is uh, the heir to the Dresden Files crown. Soul Fraud is so good that when I finished reading it, I um, put the Kindle down and you know, the Kindle has the, um, the I'm, I mean, I'm holding it now, but the Kindle has the book cover. Uh, so, you know, I got rid of the ads and the Kindle had the book cover showing. And I kept look every time I picked the Kindle up to like start reading something else, I'd look at it and be like, hmm, maybe I should just start the next Soul Fraud book. Start the next, the deck collection is the name of the series. Maybe I should start the next deck collection book. It sounds really good. I'm really excited to see what happens in it. And like, I, the book I'm reading right now, um, the book that I started after Soul Fraud is also a book that I've been anticipating all year and really hyped for. But I keep going like, oh, but maybe I should just quickly read that, the sequel to Soul Fraud. And that tells you everything about this book. I think that there are very few books that last into me reading the next book that I'm like still thinking a lot about. Um, there have been a few real thinkers that I've read and there have been a few books where I've read absolute bangers and then the next book hasn't really held up to it. But I'm reading an absolute banger right now. I'll tell you guys about it on Friday in the weekly recap. Um, but you can probably tell if you've watched the TBR video. Um, and uh, I'm still being like, well, maybe I should start Dandelion Audit on audio. The one massive plus for Soul Fraud is it's got an audiobook. So uh, I only started it because it had an audiobook, right? So on Friday, I went and drove around Somerset filming the ad spots for your paper quest. And when I was doing it, as I was going between places, because I was reading Soul Stealer, which didn't have an audiobook, I was like, well, I should probably read an audio. I should probably listen to something on audio because I'm spending the whole day out and about in the car. So I started Soul Fraud and I had just on a whim because it was self pub for September and uh, it was an urban fantasy. So different to Soul Stealer um, and it had the audio book, you know, and I was just loving it. I absolutely loved it. And I ended up reading the end of both books kind of in tandem, tandem, tandem and just genuinely had a fantastic time. And if you are a Dresden fan and you have been missing the Dresden Files, then you need you, you need you do yourself a favor, go and read Soul Fraud. It's on Kindle Unlimited, so if you've got that, you can read it for free. Otherwise, it's pretty reasonably priced. It's cheaper than a paperback. So um, go give it a, a read. Um, highly, highly recommend. And I'll be reviewing that one a week on Monday. So, if yesterday was the second, 
Soul Stealer Review will be the 9th, and Soul Fraud will be the 17th. 16th, 16th. So uh, Mondays are going to be review day from now on. There'll always be reviews. So look forward to that one. That's it for books. Let's talk a little bit about the channel for the month. So August was a bit of a down month, to be honest. Um, while I had a ton of fun and I was enjoying the reads on the channel, the viewership actually dropped um, quite a bit from the last couple of months. So we only had 7,000 views in August, which normally we hover between eight and nine, and only 650 watch hours in August, which is a, it was a very slight reduction. So um, I think that one of the big things is that in August, I didn't release as many longer videos, which does mean that you get less people watching. Uh, I think, did I do any long videos in August? I think just Lord of Chaos was the only long video I did. No, I did the video with Lion, um, but that was at the end of the month. So swings and roundabouts, essentially, um, yes, not as many long videos last month. This month, I already have two interview videos lined up and I'm hoping to line up more with other indie authors um, to kind of celebrate self pub September. Um, as talking to authors and talking to you guys in the community is one of the best parts about being a booktuber. So I definitely want to carry on doing that and do more of that. For individual videos, oh wait, I didn't tell you guys, we got 80 subs last month. 80 is around average. Normally I would get around 85 subs a month, um, 85 to 100. I guess. And um, some months I've actually got like up to 150 in the beginning of the year. I was massively growing. Now I've kind of slowed down a bit, but um, I think that that massive growth was honestly just Wheel of Time fans coming in when I started Wheel of Time. Anyway, so yeah, the best video in terms of the best performing video of August, this is a weird one. It was my review. A review is never the best performing video of the month, um, but it was a review last month and it was the review for Artemis by Andy Weir, which got 553 views, which is mad for a review. The worst performing video was my self pub September TBR, which is quite sad. I think it only got like 70 views, which is funny because, you know, six months ago, 70 views would be the best performing video of the month. But now, thankfully, um, you guys are all here, you're all watching. And I'm really appreciative of all the time that you give me and you spend on the channel. And the September TBR, unfortunately, is the least viewed video of last month. Um, the Silver Blood Promise review was the second least, as only a few more views. Um, but which is odd because Silver Blood was excellent and more people should read it. It's really good. And the Self Pub TBR. I was really excited for this month. I, I thought this month would be a big month on the channel, but unfortunately, maybe people aren't as interested. However, I do think that the community, you guys are interested in self-published books. Um, so that's why I'm doing this. Uh, people, maybe people that don't subscribe are less interested in my self-pub TBR. Anyway, I don't like to complain about YouTube performance because this channel is outperforming every single expectation I've ever had for it. So, you know, at the end of the day, when I'm going like, oh, this didn't do as high numbers as I was expecting, it's like, yeah, it didn't do as high numbers as I was expecting, but I was expecting this channel to perform incredibly poorly. So, you know. That's the end of this video, I think. I've talked about videos, I've talked about channel performance, I've talked about books. I am currently reading, I mean, I'll spoil it. I said I wasn't going to spoil it earlier, but I'll spoil it. I'm reading Eyes of Empire by JCM Byrne, um, which is the fifth book in the Hybrid Helix. Ta-da! I was using this to have my stats on my notepad. Um, so yeah, Eyes of Empire. Fantastic cover, big fan. Chris McGrath, who also does the um, deck collection book covers um, and the Dresden Files book covers. So if you like those covers, Hit up Chris McGrath, he's, he's fantastic. Um, and yeah, so I'm reading Eyes of Empire now. I'm loving it. I'm like 25% in, haven't had any chance to read today really. Um, but yeah, can't wait to get back to it. And then what else am I up to? 
I don't know what I'm going to read next. Um, I did, so Soul for Ord, you may have noticed, was not on any TBRs. So it wasn't on the Self Pub September TBR. Um, but I decided to add in because it had the audiobook. And I am considering adding in the other books this month because the latest book in the series comes out at the end of the month. So it'd be really cool to get current and be able to read it. Um, but that would mean reading three uh, three books that are all, you know, like 100,000 words or whatever. So probably unlikely, and I am going to prioritise the books that I said I was going to read in the TBR, but if it looks like we're getting close to the you know middle of the month and I've got a load of those done, then maybe we'll um, add some more debt collection books in. Also, Stephen Arian, the um, author of... I bel oh. I'm sure that his one of his books is called The Judas Blossom. So he is a um, traditionally published author. Um, however, he is publishing his first ever self-pub book, um, which is out uh, the beginning of October. However, I do have an arc of that book, which I will be reading. Um, Stephen and I um, have a fun weird history where like 15 years ago we were involved in the same community around comic books and we kind of very 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 tangentially acquaintancy know each other is an amusing i found one picture of the two of us from a meetup from years ago and that was uh, very funny because i look about 12 um uh however steven just looks like steven um un unfortunately i have aged poorly um, but anyway, let me know what you think. Let me know whether you want to read any of these books with me. Drop down in the comments and let me know what your August was like and what you're planning to read in September. And of course, like the video and subscribe. Every subscription helps. And of course, um, please do watch the Your Paper Quest video that I posted yesterday for a chance to win a free Your Paper Quest box. Goodbye.